2015 level 2 uh, electricity paper. There we go. So electric field in the wire, charge on the electron, Hamish connects a circuit shown in the picture below. Circuit comprises a 6 volt battery, uh, 1 meter of nifron resistance wire and 2 connecting wires. Series circuit, 1 round uh, loop. Uh, assume the connecting wires have no resistance, so we're only concerned with the resistance of the nichrome wire in the middle there. Calculate the strength of the electric field in the nichrome resistance wire. Voltage over distance, you've got the voltage of the battery, you've got the distance one meter. And that's your calculation. Explain what happens to the size of the electric force on the electron as it travels through the nichrome resistance wire. Well, let's look at the equation. F equals EQ, that might be a little bit easy to see in the capital E. But the electric field strength does not change. Sign does not charge on the electron does not change. Therefore, the force does not change. That's your answer. C. Calculate the distance moved by an electron, D, um, as it loses 9.6 times 10 to the minus 20 joules of electric potential energy. <coughs> uh, work equals force times distance. Um, we're trying to find the distance. The, the um, electron, and electron, has a charge of, given above, E, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, uh, negative, that is. So we know um, E, Q, D. We know what Q is, which is the charge on the electron. We're trying to find D. We know electric field strength calculated above. And the work is that much electric potential energy. That's the amount of work done uh, on it, which means the amount of energy that is uh, lost. So you can rearrange for D, and that's your answer for that. Next page. Hamish then adds another 6 volt battery in series. So that means we've got 12 volts. And shortens the wire, so um, our distance is less. Write a comprehensive explanation, excellent, on what will happen to the size of the force on the electron. Calculations are not needed. Okay, calculations are not needed, but it's a good idea to throw in an equation and have a look at there. So the force is the... Um, electric field strength times the uh, um, sorry the charge EQ. Um, so the electric field strength is the voltage over the distance times the charge. So the charge doesn't doesn't change. It's still an electron, single electron. So the charge does not change. The voltage is going to double to two V. So we have at least force going to uh, twice the force, but the distance is going to half, so this becomes half, which is again going to double um, because you're you're dividing it by two, but it's already on the bottom making it smaller, so you're doubling. So you're going to times it by two again, and you end up with four times the <coughs> excuse me <coughs> four times the force uh, for f. Uh, is that the end of the page? That is the end of the page. Next one, the electromagnetic swing. The magnet builds a swing. You can see it here, swings through the magnets. Uh, two strong magnets. You can read all the diagram yourself. Uh, the details. The diagram shows the loop entering the magnetic field. Determine the direction of the force acting on electrons in the wire BC due to their motion in the magnetic field. Okay, so it's swinging that way. You've got a single uh, negative charge with a velocity in that direction. Um, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I'll do it one way here. If this was a positive charge, so if it was a positive charge traveling in that direction, that's the direction of conventional current for the right-hand slap rule, which is the direction your thumb is going. X's mean into the page, so your fingers would be on your right hand would be there. That means you'd have a force upwards on the positive charge. So the top becomes positively charged. It'll be opposite for electron, so electrons will have a downward, downward force on the electrons due to their motion in their magnetic field. We carry on. Oh, look, I see. They've given you a nice diagram to do it all. At the instant shown on the diagram, the voltage across the wire, um, so V, uh, is 0 0.15 millivolts times 10 to the minus 3, because it's millivolts. Calculate the speed of wire in the loop. Um, B, sorry, V equals B, V, L, we know the uh, voltage, we know the magnetic field strength, just given there, and uh, we're trying to find the speed. Do we have the length above? Double checking, 
6.0 centimeters so we can rearrange that equation and find it out. See, Monique repeats the experiment um, but starts the swing from a greater height. Um, the speed of the loop at the point is doubled, so V becomes 2V, double. Explain what happens to the size of the current in the loop. Um, v equals BVL, so the length stays the same, the um, magnetic field strength stays the same, but the velocity is doubled, so the voltage will double. Um, we're after the current in the loop, I equals V over R. The resistance doesn't change, but if the voltage is becoming 2V, so the current will also become twice as much. Um, that would make sense. D, a short time later, the whole loop is inside, so a whole loop inside the magnetic field. Comprehensive explanation, there's our excellence again, um, about the current in the loop when the whole loop is in the magnetic field. Okay, let's just give this really short and sharp. Here's our loop. You've got a positive being pushed upwards there and negative downwards here. So you'll have a voltage across here. Okay, um, when the, this side here was not in the loop, that would drive conventional current around that way. As soon as you have um, a voltage, because that's inside the field too, that's pushing upwards, so you get negative on that side as well. So you're going to get a voltage here that is driving the current the other way, but it's equal and opposite to the voltage driving it um, anti-clockwise. So clockwise and anti-clockwise um, voltages, if you can put it that way, are, are driving the, it's better to put it in this term, the current is being driven clockwise and anti-clockwise, equal and opposite. The electric field is therefore um, cancelled out in that respect, and um, you'll have no current flow. Um, <laughs> I'm muddling through that, trying to go a little bit quick, but uh, you can see what is next. Next, question three, smoke detector. Uh, charge on the electron, again, um, metal plates 4.8 millimetres apart, uh, connected to a battery, alpha particles from a radioactive source, ionised smoke, uh, ionised particles of smoke between the plates, causing the smoke particles to lose one or more electrons and become charged. The diagram below shows a positively charged smoke particle before some particles towards AB. There's our force towards AB. Um, draw lines showing the electric fields between the plates. It's a positively charged smoke particle, so our field lines go in the direction of a positive charge. So that's what you would draw towards line AB. Um, you may want to have it bending slightly out at the ends. Um, sometimes you might have your uh, field lines kind of coming in from the outside too, but I think they're only interested in the inside of it. Okay, um, tips. They need to be perpendicular from the surfaces as they're coming out, and they need to be even spacing. And then sometimes a little gentle bending out at the end is, is also helpful. Again, this is one of these questions where they can ping you on the details, and you don't get to that merit or excellence, so you need to be quite much more precise than I've given you. Um, and the arrow goes in the direction of a positive charge. Mass of a smoke particle is given. A particular smoke particle loses two electrons, so it's going to be two plus charge, or two times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Um, calculate the strength it experiences a force. Calculate the strength of the electric field. F equals EQ. You know the force, you know the charge. Rearrange for E. Uh, C. Maria brings a magnet. The magnetic field now, not electric field, magnet closer to the smoke detector. Magnet produces a magnetic field given there, which with reference to the diagram is directed into the page. So the diagram above, if you remember, you had the smoke particle. So you've got a magnetic field going into the page. Let's see if I can draw that. As well as an electric field going across that way. I'm not going to draw that all in there, it gets messy. State the size of the force due to the magnet on the stationary smoke particle, stationary smoke particle. F equals B Q V. Uh, state is also a clue, there's no calculation. It's going to be zero. And explaining your answer, because velocity is zero. Zero times anything else equals zero. Has to be moving through the field uh, for there to be a force. D, the smoke particle becomes 
ionized by losing two electrons. We same thing before, so it's positive uh, plus two times uh, one by six times ten to the minus nineteen. You know the drill. Anyway, yep. uh, when it is two point four millimeters from plate AB, calculate the speed of the smoke particle when it reaches the plate AB. Assume that the only electric force that only the electric force acts on the smoke particles. So F equals EQ. We calculated the electric field before. Um, we know the um, charge, which is 2 plus. Um, when we're doing the work, which is the energy transferred, it's the force times the distance. So we'd have to take that force there, which is EQ, times it by the distance, 2.4 millimeters. That's going to give us an energy gained by the smoke particle. And now we're after the speed of the smoke particle. So we use our kinetic energy formula, half mv squared. Um, we know um, the energy, which is the energy gained, is the kinetic energy gained. Um, do we know the mass of it? Ooh, uh, I might just have to jump backwards, which I don't know how to do and preserve the recording. Um, you are given the mass, though. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 7, brilliant. Um, so you know you know the mass, um, rearrange for the velocity, don't forget it's squared, so you do square root of all that other stuff to get the velocity, and then you're there. Next question. last question, I believe. Car has two identical lamps, mark 6 volts, 2 watts. He then wants to connect them to a 9 volt battery, you've got a diagram there. Uh, he realises he will have to connect a resistor to reduce the voltage across the lamps, See the lamps are only six volts, but you've got a nine volt battery, so you need a three volt, three volt point zero volt drop across, across there. Um, calculate the current in each lamp when it's operating at normal brightness. So normal brightness, I equals P over V. Um, P is the power given above to watts. V is the voltage at normal brightness, so we know it's at 6 volts. That'll give us a current reading, which is uh, there. That is A. B, calculate the resistance of the resistor you should use so that the lamps are at their normal brightness. So that is the current we calculated just before for one lamp. There are two lamps in parallel, so we need twice that. That total current will be running through the resistor. So. Uh, we know that the voltage across the resistor is going to be 3 volts, 3.0 volts, to give us 6 volts. Um, so R equals V over I gives us the 3 volts over 2 times the current calculated before, giving us R for the resistance. See what will happen to the current in the resistor if one lamp blows. Explain your answer. So uh, in the parallel section, here's our lamps, here's our resistor going to the total current. So we've got one of these blows completely, so it's gone. That's one less pathway, that means the resistance of the entire circuit increases. If the resistance of the entire circuit increases, that means the current of the entire circuit decreases because the voltage has stayed the same. V equals I times R. So if you have an increase in um, resistance, you have a decrease in current to preserve the same voltage. So there'll be less current, which is our explanation, going through the resistor. Uh, last part, the car who sets up a new uh, circuit with different lamps and resistor, so it's completely different now, we don't have the information we had previously, um, as shown in the diagram below, calculate the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. So there's a number of ways of doing this, um, I'm going to give you just one. Um, if you were to calculate the current in the circuit, IT for total current, equals voltage T over resistance T, I equals V over R, the voltage T is at 9 volts, um, you've got 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6, which is going to be 2 over 6, um, equals 3 over 6, so that means the parallel is going to be 6 over 3, which that means that's going to be 2.0 ohms, okay, you can rewind the video, go back and see what I did there, but I was using the resistance formula for parallel, 2 ohms plus 4 ohms equals 6 ohms total, so you've got 9 volts over uh, 6 ohms, that's 1.5 amps. Okay, so when your current volt, current through the 4 ohm resistor is 1.5 amps, 
uh, the voltage across it is going to be I times R, your current is 1.5 or whatever it is calculating from there in case I've made any mistakes, times the 4, so it's going to be 6 volts. That leaves 3 volts across the other side. A second way you could do it if you wanted was to use the ratios of the resistances, that's twice the resistance of the 2 ohm section in parallel, so you should have twice the voltage, and which means you would have um, 3 volts over here and 6 volts over here. Okay, so there's a few different ways of doing that. Make sure you show all your working very clearly. And that, I believe, is that. Let's just check. Case, extra paper, that's the end.